Hi, ladies. Jackie Sabrin here. I have missed you all, and I'm sorry I've been away from my live Facebooks, my live YouTubes, and I just wanted to check in with all of you and touch base and let you know what's going on. And then I wanted to talk to you about what to do when your date shows up and he doesn't look like his photos. I thought this would be a great topic because somebody wrote me and said, what do I do? And I'm like, we'll cover it on a live video today because there's nothing more kind of upsetting to had to show up after doing your hair and makeup and getting ready, even if it's a coffee date and you're wearing your workout clothes, to have this guy in front of you with flip-flops or a beer belly or he's in a track suit or whatever he's wearing and he doesn't have any hair and you're like, who is this person? I don't even recognize who this is. And it's, it's not okay. It's a big problem. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. And so um, before I go into the big problem and what I want to talk about, I just wanted to say hi to all of you and just give you an update on what I've been doing. And right now I'm going live on YouTube and I'm going live on Facebook. And I'm just going to change the camera a little bit because I see the lighting's a little different. There we go. Hi, Terry. And hi, ladies. Thank you for being here. I know a little short notice on this video, but um, I wanted to uh, check in with you. So what I've been up to, I had a really busy first, uh, almost first quarter with a lot of enrollment into my Engaged in the Age program. And then I just finished a live workshop in La Jolla that was a complete success. It was so amazing. I really want to encourage all of you to attend my next workshop. And it is going to be in La Jolla. And here's why. We had access to the ocean. We would, I would send the ladies down to the ocean to watch sunset um, right after the workshop ended. So I timed the workshop around the weather so that when you come to La Jolla, you can take advantage of being by the ocean. And I think that's really important to be around nature. And so it just adds another dimension, another value, another benefit to you to come here so that you can be near the ocean and have this experience. So it's not just all this studying in a, in a room. And also another thing that was really special about the workshop is the where we held it on the 11th floor, the whole conference room had ocean views. So while we're sitting there working, we have this gorgeous ocean view. And also I provided breakfast, snack, lunch, and snack, and then we had wine afterwards. And it kept us all together. And so I thought that was really amazing. First time I've done that. So the next workshop, I'm going to uh, pretty much duplicate it because it was such a success. So um, I'll give you information on when that's going to happen um, when I have it ready for you. But that's what I've been doing. And um, I've also been working on, not working, I'm creating an incredible um set of videos. They're called my T GPS to love video series and they come with supporting videos. So it's a whole package where I outline my program and videos and, and the homework and the assignment so that you can join the engaged did in the age program and have self-paced videos so you can do it at your own pace and still receive live coaching every week and the Facebook support. And then you have access to move forward as quickly as you want, or you can take your time. So you're not having to, to, to be in it from like January to January or February to February, you can be in the program for as long as you want until you meet your objective, until you get the results that you want. So I'm really excited about this new model and I'm going to be offering the program again in a couple of weeks. So I'm just finishing the final touches on that and that's what I've been doing. And so um, I'm also been cold. Have you all been cold? It's been so cold in La Jolla and I can't complain because I know everybody's getting, you know, 10 feet of snow here and 12 feet here. And, and um, so, you know, I probably shouldn't even mention the weather, but brr, you know, I hope it's warming up for all of you. I'm trying to push into spring by wearing my spring tops, but I have a heater running, so I'm kind of cheating. So anyways... <laughs> That's what I've been up to, and I'm going to start doing the live videos again once a week, and then the um, the videos where I, I create videos and edit them so that they're really um, succinct for you, and I'll be producing more of those and getting that back underway like I was doing a couple weeks ago. I just needed to, to pause a little bit to regroup. So um, let's talk about these these photos that are a problem, you know. It's it's really frustrating when you meet a man and his photos don't re represent who he is. So you're taken off guard and it can throw you out of your feminine energy. It can throw you into that unconscious thinking like, what am I doing here? Right. And, and it could be discouraging. And so. And so um, I really, really wanted to address that. And and here's what I think that should happen is and I hope men are going, going to be listening to this video 
because it's posted on YouTube. But we all we we have so much access to selfies and to digital cameras now that there's no excuse why your pictures can't be current. So I'm speaking to men and women here. I think we all need to get a little bit of a a um, a a spanking here <laughs> or an account accountability here about showing up how we look. And, and so for women, we, you know, I want you to embrace how you look part of feminine energy and the feminine grace of being in your feminine grace, which encompasses your feminine energy is loving yourself so much that, you, that others can love you and that you can give out the love. Now, part of that includes accepting yourself and loving your body. Because if you don't love your body, how can you expect a man to love your body if you don't love your body? I don't care how much you weigh, how tall you are, how old you are, or how young you are. You need to love your body. Your body is where your spirit lives. It gets you through life. Your body's amazing. And you need to start appreciating your bodies more and more. One thing about your body is it is something that you have control over, okay? A lot of things in life we don't have control over, but you have control over your body. So if you're not satisfied with the way your body looks, then you can change that. But I would suggest right now that you would just embrace yourself as you are today and take pictures with your phone or somebody take pictures of you or get professional photos done to reflect how you look today. And I've given you a lot of um, support on what to wear on dates, how to do profile pictures. You can Google my um, Google, not Google, YouTube. You can do a YouTube search because I've done videos on what to wear, done videos on how to take it, take a great selfie. And um, I would just go in and redo your photos, make it uh, your set your intention to get those updated and update them once a year. And so your photos, I recommend that they should be within a year or a little over a year. That's fine. You know, 15 months, as long as you look the same, you can use the same photos. But you're always wanting to update your photos every couple of weeks with one new selfie because that moves you up to the top of the, the sites and it just makes you, you know, makes you more um, appealing. And it shows that fun, playful side of you that you can get when you do a selfie. So the selfies would be somewhere where you're out um, at a park, or maybe you're in the snow, or maybe you're just goofing off at home. And you're having a cool, you made something cool to eat or or whatever. You can take a picture of that because it shows your personality and it's a way to show your individuality. That's why I highly recommend them. They're totally acceptable now, but put effort into them. Make sure you do a whole bunch of them until you get that right angle. You're sitting the right way, looking, tilting your head the right way so that they can't come out good. And go ahead and use the filters and, and boost up your color and the lighting and, and put your best foot forward on those selfies and make them look fantastic. And um, I wouldn't add too much text to them because because that could, that could um, distract from the picture. But I definitely recommend you becoming professional selfie takers because they add a lot of fun to the online dating platform. And even when you're dating and you're dating in real life, they add they add um, a playfulness. You can you can message men your photos. And men are visual. They want to see what you look like. They want to see you. And they like that. So give them what they want because it'll be easier for you to connect with them when you have this visual. Um, and as far as the men go, um, I'll answer some of these questions in a minute. As far as the men go, when you show up, uh, before you show up on a date, I think it's totally acceptable to say to a man, Hey, by the way, just just check in. Are your, are your photos up to date? Say, I'm sorry, I want to ask you this because I want you to know that my photos are current. So when you meet me, I look how I look at my photos and it'll be easy to find me. But I'm going to just ask you, are your photos up to date? How old is, are your photos? And if the photos do look like they're 20 years younger, definitely ask them that in a phone call. And that's why I recommend a phone call. There's there's nothing wrong with asking this question. You may It may be out of your comfort zone. And if, it, and if it is, I want to ask you why. Why is it out of your comfort zone to ask a man, hey, by the way, are your photos up to date? Mine are. They've all been taken within the last year. And don't say anything else. You need to find out because how dare him show up on a date with photos from 20 years ago and he looks completely different. And there's nothing wrong with men that look completely different. Men don't even realize how much we we love men. We don't care. We don't mind that they don't have hair or they've gained weight or or whatever. What we do care about is the fact that they're not being, I think it's unethical. And I think it's a little deceitful when we don't show who we really are in pictures because it throws people uh, for a curve. And that's not what we want to do. We want to show up in our integrity so that right up front, 
we're building trust from the very minute that they meet us. And so, um, and you know, it also goes with lying about your age on your dating profile. I done a, a video on this and I actually lied about my age on my online dating profile and I had to come clean. And that's why, you know, I talk about it because I've been there and it didn't feel good. And I right away was a liar before he even met me. And so I, of course, remedied the situation, apologized, changed it. Fortunately, he was um, uh, understanding and so I appreciate that. But um, not always the case. Some men are like, if you're lying about your age, what else are you lying about? So this is kind of an integrity issue. So I hope this helps you to go ahead and get those selfies out, um, put them, bring them up to date on your profiles if you're online dating, and ask a man on the phone if his profiles are up to date. Don't hesitate. And if you have any fear around doing that, all you have to do is do it a couple times and the fear will dissipate because it's just all about practice. And if you don't get a good response from the man, when you ask him that question, that's a red flag, right? That's a red flag letting you know that there's something off. And then you can ask him about that. Say he comes back with a little bit of a trigger. Say he gets a little defensive. Like, why do you want to know? And then you can say, well... You know, honestly, I've had some experiences where I've showed up and um, the pictures were 20 years younger and he looked much different. And it was a little awkward, to be honest. And so I just want to be prepared and I want us to be both on the same page. And so you're kind of setting the bar that you want to have a, 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 a meeting that is based in honesty and integrity. And if he doesn't uh, want to provide you with that information, I wouldn't go out with him because you already know that's a red flag, right? Why put yourself in a position and spend all that time getting ready when he's already disgruntled about your question? What else is he going to be disgruntled about? So fast and hard rule. Ask him if his pictures are up to date. If they're not, ask him why. Talk to him about it. Use a feather, okay? Use a feather. Do not hammer him. Get off the phone and either go out with him or not based on what you find out. Remember, it's be curious. The more questions you ask, the more answers you get, the more you'll know and the better you'll feel when you meet up with him in real life. Yeah, good. Okay, ladies, let me answer a few questions. Then I'm going to, hi, Michelle, do a workshop in Denver. Maybe that's actually a good spot. I'm going to be there in, in May. My um, my niece-in-law is graduating from med school. So I'm really excited to go to Denver and, and um, support her in her graduation. And let me answer some questions here over on YouTube. Love your hair and makeup. What kind of foundation are you wearing on your face? Oh, thank you. I'm using a MAC foundation. And I just blue dry my hair today a little different. I, I parted it down the middle and just blue dry it a little different. And I got rid of all those highlights and downlighted it because it was getting pretty bright. So I just updated my hair color a little bit. And um, just go to Mac and see if you can find that, that um, foundation. And let me look at the questions here on YouTube. I do qualify them. These guys are good at it. Can you give me some advice to keep up the enthusiasm? Motivation for online dating. Yeah, the biggest thing that helps me with in my business and in life is why is my why? Why are you online? I mean, what is it you want out of being online? If you reconnect to that, I want to be married and have children, or I want to have a lifetime partner. I want to have somebody to play with. I want to have somebody to ski with, to surf with, to garden with, to walk with, hike. If you reconnect to that, that'll give you a lot of motivation. Like, I don't want to be alone. How's that for motivation? Why are you doing it every day to meet your beloved? That's why. And because you want to have this, this life. So I would write out what you want. I want to be married or I want to be in a committed relationship or I want to have somebody live with me. And here's why I want that. So that we can cook. I want some help. I want somebody to read with, go to movies with. And once you do that, when you connect with your deepest why, that is the motivation you need. That's the anchor you need to have all the time posted somewhere you can read it. So when the going gets challenging and you come into that discouraging energy, you can counteract it with your why. Because it's like, why? Why do I even do these videos? I mean, why do I do anything, right? And I get, it, I have this too. I mean, with so many things that I'm taking on, why do I want to expand my business so I can help more women? It's hard though, right? I have to work more. I have more videos, um, more making myself vulnerable in front of all of you. And why do I want to do that? Because I receive emails and letters from you 
so many times during the day, I could just cry about how much it's helping you and how at one time I did not have the help and support that I'm giving you. And I wished I would have had somebody like me to turn to. And that's why I'm doing it because I want to help women um, live their best life. And then when you're living your best life, you can help everyone around you because just by being who you are, embodying your feminine grace creates a ripple effect and it affects other people without you even have to say anything. That's why I do it. And so I know why I do it. And I know why I get up every day. So if you're more connected to your why, I know that's going to help you stay out of that energy of discouragement because it's a really heavy energy and it won't connect with men. So um, get back to your pen and pad and journal what you want and why you want it. And I know that's going to help all of you watching this right now. Hi, Leslie. Nice to see you here. Hi, John. Um, let's see. One more question. Is telling these wants to a man needy? So that's a great question. It just depends on how you tell him, not what you tell him. So if he asks you what you're looking for, you can say, oh, I'm just, I'm looking for someone to play with. You know, I love to, and then fill in the blanks. I love to ski and it's so much fun having a ski partner. That's why I want to to find my my person and your own words, your person, your beloved, your soulmate. Um, and you could or you could say something like, you know, I I just love spending my days with someone. I mean, just getting up in the morning, waking up next to somebody and and knowing what they're doing and sharing our experiences and supporting each other means so much to me. It's like my own, you know, little family. I want my my man to be my family because life's so much more rewarding and enriching when I have somebody by my side. That's why I want that. So that you could say stuff like that. And it isn't needy, but do you see how I said it? More passionate and excited about it and enthusiastic. And I didn't say it, oh, because I'm so lonely and I don't have anybody to go to the movie with. And so it's a much different energy. So just make sure that your energy is high and yeah, absolutely. Enroll him into your vision, but do it when you're enthusiastic because enthusiasm is contagious. So you hear somebody really excited about what they're going to have. Then all of a sudden you're like, I want that too. And so it doesn't mean you're asking him to give it to you. Just own it, you know, own it and it will connect. And it's not needy, especially if you deliver it in a similar to how I did. And you can rewatch this video again and again until you get that down. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking for more questions. Perfect. Tell them all your pictures are less than a year old and ask them if theirs are and wait to get an answer. It is unacceptable to not get an answer. That will tell you something about a man. Also, if he doesn't answer your request, like, why aren't you answering my question? You know, it's an intimacy issue. If you ask a question, you deserve an answer just because you're on the phone with him. If he isn't giving you the answers to your question, that's a red flag. What else is he going to withhold from you? Is it really hard for him to answer that question? And um, and so, yeah, you're wanting to see what answers you get. That tells you a lot about men. Remember, the first conversation is, is a... I don't want to say it's an interview or a vetting, but it is. And it saves a lot of time. In fact, there's statistically speaking, 35% of marriages are happening from online meetings. Mine certainly did. It's And they're lasting longer. The statistics show that um, online marriages last seven to 10 years, um, statistically speaking. And that's longer than marriages that are met in real life. And I just read that recently. And the reason why I feel it's because we have a lot more information up front. We're going through this vetting or interview process. They're vetting us too and interviewing us for the position. <laughs> and so it's it's acceptable to ask these questions and it's expected and we're prepared. And so we know more about somebody right up front versus the old way where we waited to see how things unfold and we're too afraid to ask questions because we don't want, we're, we have all these fears, but I'm teaching you how to overcome them about walking on eggshells or not asking questions because you want them to like you and be a good girl. And we're done with all of that behavior. It doesn't serve us. So remember, it's always a feather, not a hammer, but we ask to ask those questions, but we do it in a certain way that will give us the answer to the um, question we want. And they'll respect you for it too, by the way. Men respect you for asking questions because why wouldn't you? You're a smart woman, right? It's just, again, how you ask those questions. How do I make a Facebook friend friend date you? Um, well, if you want 
to um, have them notice you, I would start liking pictures, not too much. Don't like creep on their page, but like their pictures and that they'll start to notice that you're liking their pictures. And um, you maybe send them a little private message asking them a question about a picture, just like you would online dating and see if you can get a conversation going. And in that conversation, that's how you drop your hanky. And then hopefully he's going to pick it up and um, ask you out. So I wouldn't be direct and ask him out, but I would like his photos and maybe private message him if he's liking your photos and see if you can get a dialogue, get some traction, then private message him a question about a photo and see if you can open up a dialogue. So I hope that helps you. And um, what website do I recommend for online dating is a question. Well, I recommend um, Bumble. Uh, Bumble now isn't necessarily great for um, if you're in a destination location because it's going to pick up people when they're transient. And so Bumble works for um, a great in California, uh, works great in areas, densely populated areas. It moves very fast. I really like Bumble and I like Match too. Match takes a little bit longer, but the, there's usually a deeper inquiry that happens there. So yeah, it's a little delayed response and Match works in most areas. So those are my two favorite dating sites. Um, I do like the other ones, but these are the ones that I recommend to my clients. Okay, ladies, I hope this was helpful. So great to connect with all of you. I'll keep you posted about the program details and my next workshop. In the meantime, check out my um, YouTube channel and subscribe to it if you haven't, so that you don't miss any of these uh, live videos or episodes that I produce. And would you please like my Facebook page if you haven't done that? I um, And maybe post a uh, um, a testimonial where you can just put a couple lines in about the content. And if it's resonating with you, I would really appreciate that. So ladies, thank you so much for being here. Hope you have a beautiful day. And I'm just sending you all so much love. Remember, you can never fail if you never give up. Okay. Lots of love. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you, Leslie. Bye.